15 doubly inspiring member award winner. Mm -hmm. Maybe I met her. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me share my screen very quickly. Okay. I can see your screen share. We can see your screen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Yeah, so we can wait, wait uh, uh, a few uh, more minutes. Few more minutes. Uh, 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 so somebody's, um, somebody's, yeah, somebody's yes. audio is uh, causing echoing, I think. Okay, yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Uh, so, uh, uh, Lei from the IEEE VTA San Diego uh, is here. She will uh, briefly introduce uh, Professor uh, Shandas. Uh, we also uh, uh, have Charlie from uh, IEEE Computer Society uh, San Diego chapter, and hopefully uh, a few uh, more of our members will join soon. So mm -hmm. maybe uh, wait a couple of minutes and then we can get started. Thank you. Lay has been connected with me in violating them. Lay, you are muted. Mute me. How about now? <laughs> I'm sorry, well, did I just mute it myself? I guess so. Uh, we can hear you now. Okay, okay, okay. My honor to, to meet you, um, Professor Shannes. Thank you. To meet you. This is your usual meeting time. And uh, this is the 6 to 7 PST. You usually organize your webinar? We organize from 5.30 to 6.30. Uh, considering uh, your time, uh, I just shifted it like uh, 30 minutes. Okay, I, I got it. Yeah. Yes. Next next month, we have another talk from uh, Professor Rocha from uh, uh, he, he is in Brazil, so that talk, we scheduled it at like 12 p.m., <laughs> so that's going to be a different uh, time entirely. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, so I think we can get started. So uh, thanks a lot, Professor Shanas, for joining uh, uh, and uh, agreeing to uh, give a lecture in our 2013 invited lecture series. So, uh, and Lei, can you... Please take the floor and uh, introduce Professor Shannon. Thanks. Uh, we can't hear you right now, Lei, just so you know. Hello? Can everybody hear me right now? Yeah. yeah. Great, great. We can hear you now. Okay, thank you, Uka. And uh, uh, Good evening, everyone, or uh, good morning <laughs> for, for all other attendees. Maybe your local time is in the morning. Anyway, um, this is the fourth lecture of 2023 invited seminar series organized by IEEE Computer Society San Diego chapter. And today, a uh, virtual talk is hosted by the IEEE um, Vehicular Technology Society San Diego chapter as well and IEEE Women in Engineering Affinity Group of San Diego section. And please join me and welcome Dr. Celia Shanes. Professor Shanes received her a PhD degree from a Concordia University in Canada and is currently a professor at the Department of IEEE Buitt Bangladesh since 2015. Um, she has published more uh, than 150 late, international. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Your audio is a bit choppy. It's, uh, and we are uh, uh, hearing oh, really? some echo, like. Uh, 
Okay, let me see what else I can do. I'm sorry about my audio is not working perfectly. How about now? Does it sound better? Um. Uh. Still. Can you hear? Me? Uh. Let me see. Ah. Okay. Me yeah. See. Can you try it one more time? Yes. Um. To, to test it, can everyone hear me? Not sure. Uh. We can. Uh, yeah. Let Let's continue. Okay. Hello. Can Can everyone hear me? Oh, okay. Okay. I'm sorry about my audio. There's uh, some issues there. Let me continue introducing um, Professor Shana, and um, she has published more than 150 international journal and conference papers. She is a recipient. Oh, sorry about that. Um, she's a recipient of the Canadian Commonwealth Scholarship and Fellowship, and she has been elected as 2022 IEEE WIE Committee Chair elected, and she has served as the, uh, the 2023 to 2024. IEEE WIE committee chair. She has more than 20 years of experience in leading impactful techno technical professional projects at international levels. Her research interest includes the areas of signal processing for speech analysis and speech enhancement, audiovisual recognition for the biological uh, security, control system, robotics, pattern recognition, machine learning, and deep learning for audio, video, biomedical, power signals, uh, multi-model emotion recognition, and the human brain technology. Let's welcome Dr. Uh, Shanas to give us the wonderful speech today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, professor. Yeah, you can start sharing. Uh, uh, your sharing has stopped. I think. Uh, sorry. Thank you, Dr. Paul and and Dr. Lee and Teresa uh, for a wonderful and humble introduction. So let me share my screen. It's a great honor to be here. Let me share my screen very quickly. Yes. Uh, oh, oh, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'll be very quick. Uh, yes, I'm really happy to be here today, early in the morning here, in the evening there, but this uh, hybrid world has really connected us together. Uh, you have already known to this topic, and I'll be uh, speaking about it in a lemon term so that it becomes uh, useful and impactful to both all of you. It's just a brief bio. Uh, I request you to visit my website, www.celiationist.com. Also, I request you to visit my Google Scholar citation to let to let you know that despite many limitations, because I have many talented students here at Bangladesh University of Engineering Technology from where Upal has graduated. I'm a professor there. It is the highest ranked engineering university in the country. 
despite many limitations of computational facility, research opportunities, funding, and majority of my students, they want to go to MIT. At least one ended up going to MIT now because everyone wants to go there. That means we have scarcity of full-time graduate students. So despite all of this, how my students are working very hard to publish impactful journals and conferences. And most important, those are cited by others. That is really important. That gives a hope. Uh, that we are in the right direction. Uh, recently, the World Academy of Science has elevated me as a fellow. Uh, uh, it's effective from January and 2023. And I have been also inducted as IEEE HKN Society member. And uh, I was the founder of four technical society chapter in the country. Uh, so I will really request you to visit my website. And <laughs> since the inception of Women in Engineering in 1993, I am the first elected Women in Engineering Chair. It's a great honor to serve you. And it's a great opportunity because Women in Engineering is exposed to 39 technical societies and councils. We are have liaisons from 39 technical societies around the world. This is a great honor to work people with many interests. And let me tell you, this is one of our major products, IEEE Women in Engineering Magazine. This is our winning in June 2022. They published my interview. I'll send it to Lei and Dr. Mabo so that it can be circulated among the participants. It's not about my accomplishment. It's about how you can reach out to me to provide me some guidelines so that I can do something for you. So today's topic, you know, let's start with a capsule network for abnormal detection in musculoskeletal radiographs. For your kind information, it has been done my, by my undergraduate as a student and it has been published in IEEE Access. Uh, so when I was discussing with them, uh, they asked me why musculoskeletal radiographs. I told them because 1.7 billion people are suffering from the abnormality related to musculoskeletal radiographs. For my research, I always try to connect with one of the sustainable development goals by United Nations SDG. So the research that can create impact on many people so our student has developed this network to detect abnormality from musculoskeletal radiographs, okay? And this is a simple, <clears throat> you take the input and do some pre-processing, then go through some convolutional neural network and capsule network, and finally the class capsule <clears throat> to have the decision. Uh, like many other image processing research, uh, we need pre-processing. Here we can see uh, three sizes of image, 64 cross 64, 128 cross 128, 224 cross 224. From the visual observation, we can understand the rightmost one uh, preserve the more features and the downsampling degrades the image quality. However, we do not depend on the subjective evaluation only. We actually depend on some objective measures such as training accuracy and validation accuracy for two to four cross two to four, the both accuracies are higher. We also wanted to know what is the blind image spatial quality evaluator brick score and natural image quality evaluator mix score. The lower the score, the better it is for preserving the information. You can see from the down table that from two to four across two to four, both the scores are lower. That means we lose less feature after resizing. That gives us a motivation of using and process for two to four across two to four is resized image. Okay. 
This is the proposed structure of the capsule network. As far as the convolution one has 256 9 cross 9 convolutional kernels. And then the capsule convolutional capsule layers, it has 32 channels. Okay, the primary capsule has 32 104 104 capsule output. The class capsule has two capsules, and each capsule has a dimension two. If we see this picture, that will be better for us. We can see the pre-processed image then with the convolutional one and then with the class capsule. But before going to the decision, we apply routing by agreement algorithm. I'll explain you the effectiveness and the reason of routing by agreement algorithm. If you go through my paper, you can really get this equations which are important for better explanation that what is the total loss reconstruction and what is the structure of input capsule prediction factor and other things, okay? Uh, whenever we are handling such biomedical data, the question is the whether the data is authentic. However, we have used Mura data set containing 14,656 images. Among them, 8,941 images are normal and 5,715 images are abnormal. But there's a good thing that we don't have data imbalance, okay? And this is the routing by agreement. Uh, it is an iterative process. If you look at the training and validation accuracy in the y-axis, x-axis, the number of routing, and it has been plotted for many radiograph types like finger, elbow, hand, um, humerus, forearm, shoulder, and breast. For majority cases with increase of number of routing, the both validation and training accuracy increases. But if you see the second but last row, you can see that there is some overfitting happens. To avoid overfitting, we are have a rational to take four routing, okay? And uh, that means the number of routing affects the accuracy. Usually, as the number of routing increased, accuracy gets better. But we cannot keep on increasing it, okay? <clears throat> to avoid overfitting, we have restricted it to four. Um, to really tell uh, that uh, we have designed a really appropriate model for this problem, we have utilized a statistical score called, called Kuhn-Kappa statistical score. And we have compared with the standard dense net. Uh, the green is caps net and blue is dense net. And the Kappa score for all types of image. We can see the proposed caps net architecture provide almost 10% better Kappa score uh, using 50% less training data. That is an important claim, okay? And question is how we are comparing it. We are comparing with the performance metric or training accuracy and testing accuracy and compared with standard method published in the literature and compared to the conventional dense lit, we can see the accuracy of CAPSNET using core routing in the same neural data set. Uh, training and testing accuracy, both are higher for all types of images. Now, question is how accurate our model is. Uh, we have plotted loss versus accuracy curve. The red one is the accuracy of the uh, caps net. Red one, black one is the loss of the caps net. Blue one is the accuracy of the dense net, and uh, purple one is the loss of the dense net. We can see our model is offering more accuracy and less loss compared to the conventional dense net. Uh, let us discuss another work where we have uh, detected tuberculosis using chest radiographs. 
Uh, this work has already been also been done by my undergraduate students and published in IEEE Access. Uh, this is a proposed method. We are taking the chest radiographs. In upper level, we have handcrafted feature ensembling. In the lower level, we have deep neural architecture ensembling, such as dense net, resnet, inception periphery. And then we have ensembled both the architectures to have a better decision. So these are the handcrafted feature we have extracted, such as histogram-oriented gradients, binary pattern of phase congruency, and many others. And we have evaluated the quality of the feature by voltage area distance and geometric separability index. Uh, we can see for individual uh, six types of different types of handcrafted features, the voltage area distance is very low and geometric separability index. So that index that we have a high interclass separability and intraclass compactness. Then we have evaluated the performance of individual handcrafted features under different evaluation matrices like accuracy, area under the curve, sensitivity and specificity for two types of database, MC and Sengen. We can see when we do the ensembling, the matrices are higher. Before going to the uh, architectures, we have analyzed uh, which layer gives the better matrices for each type of architecture like inception V3, dense net 169 and ResNet 50. This is an important information. And then we have shown that these architectures, while ensembled, gives better results with augmentation and with retaining. The ensemble results is sent back to the sent to the classifiers, such as logistic regression, SVM, artificial neural network. Kenyaris neural network, random decision forest to get the final decision using the deep neural network ensemble feature. And we can see logistic regression provides us the better value. Now it is time for us to compare, uh, compare the result proposed method from in comparison to the, to the standard state of the art techniques for all the data sets available, publicly available to us. And we can see our ensemble of hand engineers and deep neural network provides a very optimistic, better value for tuberculosis detection. And this is the, you know, uh, your rat cam evaluation, you know. And the first row is the normal and second row is the tuberculosis. The first column is the pre-processed image and the third, fourth, and fifth columns are for dense net inception with ResNet 50. The first block is for MC database, second block is the sentient database. We can see that there is a remarkable difference between normal and tuberculosis, but we don't want to do it visually, right? That's why we want to automatically detect it for faster or for more accurate decision, okay? So this is one of my favorite research. Uh, Ma'am, uh, do you expect yeah. questions in the middle or at the end? Uh, whatever, whatever, yeah, okay. if there is question or uh, I can I can I can listen at the end then I can okay. summarize and give 
uh, I can show an interrelation, interrelation mm -hmm. from one question to different techniques. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. yeah Thank this you. Is that, yeah. yeah. So this is my favorite research actually. We started in 2020 as the COVID-19 detection from different imaging techniques. My students started collecting X-ray, CT, and ultrasound images, and they came up with a very good network. I will tell you, I'll show you, which uh, could automatically detect the COVID from, from different imaging techniques. Not only that, they were able to provide a three-class classification uh, whether uh, data coming as a normal pneumonia or COVID, because both case pneumonia and COVID, the oxygen saturation level decreases, and they really did it. And this work has been published in IEEE Transactions on Artificial Intelligence. They are also undergraduate students, you know. Uh, the architecture, the name, Caps Cognate, I really like that. And this is the architecture as uh, so that we take ultrasound video frames and we do some pre processing. And from there, we send it to the Caps Cognate network. If you see below the Caps Cognate network, it has parallel convolutional block and then a concatenated capsule block before going to the decoder block to have a uh, decision. So let us see is a parallel convolutional block. These are the different sizes uh, of different blocks in case of parallel convolutional block uh, to extract features from input images, you know, and then this represents the concatenated capsule network consists of a primary capsule and a and a bipolar capsule layer. The different layers are shown by different colors, and we have also applied here routing by agreement algorithm. Finally, this is the decoder uh, class capsule connected to the three dense layers. Uh, and uh, and to get the decision to the reconstruct image at the same time, applying a L2 norm distance to get the decision about the three class normal pneumonia and COVID. I have mentioned the different sizes, how it really transfers and how it looks like. Uh, we have three publicly available databases. And you have seen our evaluation matrices. This time we have also used F1 score, and we show that with NCLASHI pre processing and with pre training, the evaluation matrices are higher. Okay. And, and now the justification why the capsule network is not serial or sequential is a parallel concatenate and convolutional black for all data sets, for all evaluation matrices. We are really getting high values. This is a confusion matrix anyway. So for both the data sets, we have compared our result with already existing state-of-the-art methods. And we can see that for both the data sets, proposed method is outperforming. Uh, the lower table represents our result for three class classification, like uh, uh, compared to the two other existing techniques to show whether it is normal pneumonia or COVID. In terms of F1 score precision specificity sensitivity, we can see that proposed method is doing better. And this is also a visualization of ultrasound and X ray images. You can see for two types of database original images, pre processed images, then the visualization. The first block is normal, second block COVID, third block pneumonia. First three row for a database, 
next zero for different data set. And from visual observation, we can see there are difference between normal COVID and pneumonia, but we wanted to do it automatic this section. That's why we have applied uh, CAPSCOVNET to get a result without depending on the visual observation only. Uh, let me tell you another interesting work. This is a competition. Signal Processing Society has a flagship conference, ICIP, and it was a competition. My students participated in it. Distortion classification in laparoscopic videos using DISNET network. So our actually uh, this uh, laparoscopic videos has different types of distortion, such as white Gaussian noise, smoke level, uneven illumination, blur level. So taking the input image from the video, at first we detect different types of distortion videos. We have a extracted feature array and then send it to the DISNET network so that some mitigation plan can be taken in the surgery to avoid fatal death. This is a image are captured from the video that is white Gaussian noise affected. Uh, you know, uh, the noise variance is a key factor here to characterize an image, whether it is polluted by white Gaussian noise or not. Uh, these are images which are have smoky level. Uh, smoky frames tend to have a less median value. We do it by histogram analysis. Uh, these are images captured from videos which has uneven illumination level. And the ratio of luminance mean to range is a great indicator for this change. And these are images where uh, the images are very blur because of camera hardware issue. A blur image will show how low variance and less ages. So these are the indicating factor that help us to find the extracted array. Once we get the array, we send it to this DISNET network. You can see that here, uh, before going to the LSTM network, we have introduced a sequential self-attention layer to give a better attention to different uh, distortion category. And then we have two sequential LSTM uh, before going to the dense layers and going to the decision. So I think this introducing this sequential self-attention layer before LSTM is the reason to have an outcome. This is our model performance. Our model accuracy always increases and model loss decreases. That means we are in the right direction of proposing the model. And this is the performance of the competitions compared to the accuracy loss and Cohen score in training and validation. You can see we have a common developed values with lower loss, higher Cohen Kappa score, higher accuracy. We also evaluated our performance to unseen data. Uh, for unseen data, our accuracy and Cohen score did not decrease much. Finally, this is the competition results. Among all groups, our method was ranked third in terms of accuracy, but in terms of average timing, because it has to be, decision should be very fast. Uh, we were ranked first. So these are the important things to really realize or consider while claiming something for certain application. You know, I am a, uh, I'm an advocate of women for many years and our women and children are suffering from skin diseases, but they feel shy to treat it. So, we have digital images of different classes of skin cancers. Already we have published two conference papers, but at this moment we are working with different data sets to apply the deep neural network and to propose a new neural network to automatically detect 
the skin diseases uh, from these digital images so that ultimately we can bring transfer it into an app no matter whether you are in a rural area you can use it and you can detect it and it was so effective during the covid covid like situation so it is important to reach the diagnosis to the rural community no matter where your expert doctor is sitting especially uh it is very important for women and children Oh, these are my some hours. You are you should be the next Teresa Brook and others. When I started, I really didn't know anything. I started from the scratch. So I was the winner of WA Professional Volunteer Award from Asia Pacific Region 10, WA Inspiring Member from Global WI in 2015, among all male and female leaders in NGA. MG Leadership Award in 2016, MG Achievement Award in 2021, 2019 Region 10 Humanitarian Activities Outstanding Volunteer Award. Who is next? It is somebody you, apart from my many best paper hours. And this is important. I worked for a group, I trained my group, and my group, my Omen in Engineering Affinity Group, was the best one in the Region 10, also best one in the whole world. And also the Buet WA student branch, for which I was a founder, uh, became the best one in Region 10, became the best one in the whole world. I really, uh, and, and the left picture, lower picture, is my section's picture. You know, under my leadership, my section has received 2018 MG Outstanding Large Section Award. And we received in, in Region 10 Congress with 32 delegates. So these are young chaps, and many of them are doing PhD in Berkeley and other very different universities. Hope they will be better later, and I will be more satisfied no matter where they are. Hope they will do better and the information will be disseminated. And these are the two chapters with whom I am related. Our engineering medicine biology chapter has received 2022, 2020 EMBS Regional Outstanding Chapter Award because we have launched our own conference, Besit Khan, and the Signal Processing Society for which I'm the founder has received chapter certification very quickly. This is important why we are doing the chapters to ensure recognition for the young generation and yeah uh, we change the world because we are engineer however we are very inclusive we promote stem education uh, sometimes i tell us it is steam science technology engineering arts and math to be to to promote diversity and inclusion in technical activities and everywhere so since I'm chairman in engineering, I request you to visit us at WEIEEE.org. We have our Twitter, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, collaborative community, and Instagram. Follow us in those medias. Thank you once again for inviting me. If you have any question, feel free to ask me. If I know, I will respond. Otherwise, I will go back to my students. Thank you for your patience. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Shahnaz, uh, for the nice and also inspiring uh, talk. So, yeah, from the audience, if there is any question, feel free to speak up. Uh, I, yeah. I actually have one question. Uh, so, I see in one of your works you are. Uh, using an ensemble of traditional and deep features. Uh, yes. So where does exactly the traditional features work better than deep features? <laughs> yeah, actually, if we, we have, uh, if you see this, you know, uh, sometimes we do not need to always depend on the deep neural network. I have seen that those handcrafted features they really play 
good, uh, the prayer really give you good results. So we really didn't want to throw the uh, effect or impact of those handcrafted features. So individually we have taken those ensembling of handcrafted features and it's, it's not always uh, uh, that it gives the good results, but when we ensemble the neural network architectures individually, also it gives a good results compared to the individual one. But for sure, when we ensemble them, it gives a better decision. So it's really, uh, it is difficult to define that in what point uh, or in which respect these are different. You cannot just conclude such decision. It's, it's among, among your uh, learning. It's a knowledge sharing. Uh, uh, and, and we have done it for uh, two databases. Okay. So mm -hmm. the existing two databases, we can see that uh, it's not always right to depend only on the handcrafted features. It is not always accurate appropriate to depend only on the deep neural network features. But we can do ensembling among the deep neural network features. We can also do ensembling among the uh, handcrafted features. And finally, actually, it, ensembling gives you a better result. However, you can design a better weighting factor. You can design a better attention factor here to really know what you wanted to do that if you if you could use an attention factor that my students have used later then mm -hmm. we could we could realize that in which point it makes a difference but when we published this work we could we did not use this attention network to really find or define the point of difference on point of decision uh, that uh, what is making a difference am i clear Paul? yeah okay thanks uh anyone else may i ask a question sure sure okay thank you so much um dr shanes thank you for your insightful uh, presentation <clears throat> um I saw you in your slides on page 20, you showed us um, graphs and a table to show uh, the metrics uh, of the of the um, models. Could I ask you a general question about how do you evaluate the image recognition, accuracy, and the loss? And is there a industrial standard to say to conclude that this is a good um, metrics. Yeah, you are talking about accuracy and loss curves. Yes, yes, I'm curious about that. Yeah, because it is a model, you mm. know, and, uh, and uh, of course, uh, there is some true positive, false negative, and there is some formula, right, to define your accuracy. And when you when you give your accuracy, and since it's a model, you can also find the loss. And we have shown different loss functions. However, you can propose your own loss function. So based on the loss function and based on your <clears throat> detection accuracy, you mm -hmm. can really uh, define what is your accuracy, what is your loss. So this is the loss function defined publicly available in the literature. In that sense, you can tell that it has some standard or benchmark equation. However, uh, you could play with your own parameters to define your own loss function to see that how uh, your own inputs in defining your own loss function can give you a better or indication compared to the accuracy. However, for accuracy, we didn't define anything by ourselves. It is the standard approach uh, found in the literature for define the accuracy. And 
it is really important to tell you that compared to the benchmark, such as what you are telling industry standard, compared to the benchmark like conventional dense net, mm -hmm. how your proposed model are performing. So in that case, accuracy and loss is an important criteria to define that whether you are going in the right direction, whether your model is really accurate, your model is, and whether your model is appropriate. And that also we have used a standard state of the art techniques that is called the statistical score, Cohen Kappa statistical score. That also gives you a value, a standard measurement that whether the model that you are proposing are randomly chosen or really appropriate for the current applications. So these are the standard you can tell, or we can conclude that we have used accuracy and loss and Cohen Kappa's statistical score to convince people that our models are appropriate. At the same time, our models are accurate. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Uh, there is a question on the chat uh, th uh, from Dr. Julia Taylor. Thank you, Dr. Celia. Very interesting work. Uh, it can make diagnosis much faster, right? So yes. Uh, it, it, that's why our claim is first to detect diseases automatically, not based on visual observation. This is the first claim. Because these are radiograph, these are CT, these are ultrasound, the doctors can look at them, have a subjective evaluation, and based on their expertise, they can tell that whether there is a COVID, whether there is abnormality. But you know, the number of patients in the Indian subcontinent are always high compared to the number of doctors, okay? But you cannot guarantee an expert doctor always. And number of working hours for a doctor also very high. So if a patient comes at the end of the duty hour of a doctor, and if that patient is very fatal, and if you depend on the doctor's expertise, who is not so experienced, so there is a tendency of having a wrong diagnosis. So that's why we wanted to give this automatic detection programs to our doctors so that without depending on their own expertise or on top of their own expertise, they can take decision from there for emphasizing their decision towards accuracy. So this is an automatic. And second, uh, since by method by metrics, we are showing that it is accurate. That means it is accurate. My question, third question is whether it is fast enough. You know, uh, now people have GP, right? So it's possible to have it very as quick as possible because you are having the faster GPU. So these are the three points we wanted to bring and do Give inspired the medical doctors to use our methods as an engineer. Thank you. Thank you. Do you also consider uh, uh, explainability? Because uh, there has been a lot of concern about just giving out a confidence score and a classification versus explaining uh, why the network made such a decision. Uh, like any thought about like yeah. extending your work? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. But that that's direction. a very good question. That's a very good question because they say era of explainable AI. At this moment, my PhD student is working with uh, for breast cancer detection from histopathological image, mammogram, and ultrasound images. For his work, we are using the explainable AI to give the justification, but this for this earlier works in last few years, we did not apply this explainability uh, to give a confidence for, but at this moment we are using for our breast cancer detection. 
and hopefully in future works it's it's, it's obvious because mm -hmm. we are questions from the reviewers about this explainability thank you for a very timely question okay any any other question or comments or things to discuss with dr shanaz hello teresa do you want to say something No, it was just a, the how exciting it is and what kind of breakthroughs we can make in the medical field with this research and um, with the ability to uh, detect, uh, you know, uh, both early and more accurately. Um, yeah, thank you. We can actually, I started my career as a simple signal processing. I uh, passed with the knowledge of Fortran, then I came to know about MATLAB, right? Mm -hmm. And then after PhD, I thought that I must update myself, otherwise I will be lost into oblivion. <laughs> then with my I learned all these things. So every time I'm learning and updating myself, and it's pretty exciting. And my students are also doing signal processing cup competitions from 2015. What is important, uh, there is very few female supervisors for, and also very few female students. Mm -hmm. I will request our male colleagues to inspire their female students to join Signal Processing Cup competition. I'm also telling because I served as a woman in Signal Processing for the last two years before I started my tenure as a women in engineering chair. I have seen this scenario. And also this BTS Computational Analytics Computer Society Signal Processing Society. These are all related. It is important to do this interdisciplinary research, especially we talk about diversity. We talk about it first, and we also talk about diversity. This is really important. Very good. Especially Very good. So, thank you. Uh, okay, so with that, I think we can uh, uh, call it a day. Thank you so much, Professor uh, Shanas, for joining so early. Uh, I do see uh, one comment in the chat uh, from John Eldon. Uh, thanks. Uh, thank you for encouraging women into engineering. And also another comment. Thanks, Professor Shanas. It, uh, it has been a very insightful and encouraging presentation. So, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Uh, the, the recording we are, we'll upload it uh, so that uh, people, our members, and like everyone can view it uh, later on. And uh, uh, hopefully, we'll get a chance to host you again uh, sometime in the future. Thank you. Opal was one of my Opal is one of my favorite students. I'm really happy that he's doing good and. <clears throat> And, uh, and now he is working with all of you. And I invite you to visit Bangladesh. You know, yeah. I was a Canadian okay. Commonwealth scholar for doing my PhD in Canada. And I came home here to serve my nation. But I really invite you to join it. You will love it. Oh. We have around 10 to 15 conferences per year organized by our section. Paul, I will share the call for papers with Lee and everyone, Kathy, their Terrace group, so that you can feel interested and you love it. We have our largest unbroken sea beach in the world. We call it Bay of Bengal and we have Shundarbon that is the mm -hmm. largest man in the world. However, the people are lovely, people are hardworking, they are passionate. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you. Thank you. Look Thank out. Have a good day. Have Thank a you. Good day. Have, Bye. have a good day. Bye. Bye.